Up next, we have big news from Apple because Apple just made one of the most important AI hires possibly in its history. And it comes from a Bengaluru University graduate, Amar Subramanya, who is now in charge of Apple's global AI strategy. He's ex-Google, he's ex-Microsoft, he ran engineering for Google's Gemini Assistant. He helped build foundation models for Copilot at Microsoft and now he's walking into Cupertino at the exact moment that Apple is being accused of falling behind in AI. Before we proceed, remember there's a huge demand for Bengaluru-based tech bros with Anthropic also appointing Rahul Patil, the Pesit graduate, as the CTO. But back to Apple. John J. and Andrea, the man who led Apple's AI push since 2018, is retiring next year in spring 2026. And series Apple Intelligence Reboot has already been delayed to next year after a very public stumble. Rivals like OpenAI, Google and DeepSeek are racing ahead with frontier models and dedicated AI hardware. So here's the question, is Bengaluru boy Amar Subramanya the person who finally makes Apple an AI first company or is his appointment too late in a race already dominated by OpenAI and Google? So let's break down who he is, what changes inside Apple from tonight and what this means for India and the global AI war. This is Front Page by AM Network. Welcome back, like, share, subscribe. You do not want to miss this one. So while you're at it, here's what Apple announced. John J. and Andrea, the senior VP of machine learning and AI strategy at the company, is stepping down and will only serve as an advisor until spring 2026 and then he retires. So up next, Amar Subramanya becomes the vice president of AI, reports directly to Craig Federighi, who's the Apple's senior software engineering VP and will lead Apple's foundational models, ML research, AI safety and evaluation. And the rest of Jane Andrea's empire is being split. AI infrastructure and search and knowledge move to Chief Operating Officer Saib Khan and Services Chief Eddie Q. Apple calls this the start of a new chapter for Apple intelligence and is promising intelligent, trusted and profoundly personal experiences. What does this mean in English? <laughs> this is Apple's biggest AI leadership reshuffle since Apple Intelligence was announced in 2024. And the center of gravity has shifted to a Bengaluru educated engineer. So let's talk about the man now sitting on top of Apple's AI stack. Because Amar Subramanya did his bachelor's of engineering in electronics and communication at Bangalore University, then went on to the University of Washington for a PhD in computer science, focusing on ML, large scale systems, and natural language technologies. So the person who will decide how Siri thinks and how Apple's foundation models behave started that journey in Nama Bengaluru's engineering classrooms. And of course, 16 years at Google, joined Google early and stayed nearly for 16 years, rose to become the head of engineering for the Gemini assistant, worked closely with Google DeepMind, giving him hands-on experience with, say, cutting-edge research teams, large multimodal models, and a global scale infrastructure. So in simple terms, he's one of the few people who has seen Google's AI stack from the inside. A brief but an important stop at Microsoft. And just six months ago, he became the corporate vice president of AI at Microsoft. He worked on the foundation models that power Microsoft's co-pilot across enterprise and consumer users. He's publicly praised the culture as low ego, high ambition and called conversations with Mustafa Suleiman and Satya Nadella nothing short of inspiring and yet he left that job in months to join Apple. Now that tells you two things. One, Apple is probably offering a bigger, more central mandate than he had at Microsoft because Apple is admitting that it wants to win the next decade and for that it needs someone who has lived inside intimately both Gemini and Copilot. So Amar is not walking into a calm and a polished Cupertino, remember that, because he's walking into a firefighting AI moment, because Apple intelligence has under-delivered, you know, which was launched with a huge hype in 2024 and hasn't yet become the must-have AI experience. And one of its biggest promises, a dramatically upgraded Siri, was pushed further to 2026. And iOS 18 marketing talked about a smarter Siri, but Apple later admitted that it couldn't ship the full version on time because internally that delay also triggered an exodus of AI talent, emergency rewrites of Siri's personal context, on-screen awareness and app integration. And of course now you have a complete leadership reset and while rivals are moving faster, Apple was still wrestling with Siri. 
you know, Microsoft and OpenAI rolled out Copilot and agentic workflows across Windows, Microsoft Office, and GitHub. Then on the other hand, you have Google, who unified DeepMind and Google Brain, launched Gemini 3, and put it into Android, Google Search, and its workspace. Of course, not to forget, DeepSeek in China matched Gemini class reasoning with far fewer chips and GPUs. Our next Apple design chief, Johnny Ive, sold his startup to OpenAI with prototypes for an AI native design that is already in the works. And that's expected to launch in the next two years. So for Apple, a company that once defined consumer tech, it suddenly looks like a fast follower in AI because investors are, of course, getting restless. Apple stock is, of course, up this year, but it underperformed other AI heavy tech giants. And of course, big investors, including some we talked about in our earlier episode on Tim Cook's possible exit and the iPhone 20 era, have quietly questioned Apple's AI narrative. So Amar's appointment is not just a hiring story, it's Apple telling Wall Street that, look, you know what, we're serious. We're putting a Gemini and a co-pilot experienced engineer in charge of fixing Apple intelligence. But what exactly will Amar control? Because let's map the power structure as this is where the real story lies. So Amar Subramanya, as we said, he's going to be the VP of AI. He's going to own Apple's foundational models, the big models that will power Siri, on-device assistants, generative features in messages, Photos, Xcode, and beyond. He's also going to lead ML research. That's the brain that you know trusts and decides the architectures, training recipes, how far Apple pushes on-device versus cloud models. The brain that also owns the AI safety and evaluation that is crucial for content moderation, bias and toxicity controls, and of course, regulatory compliance in US, Europe, and India. So he's going to report directly to Craig Federighi, which means Apple's AI is now logically going to be attached to software and operating system, not treated as a detached research lab. Meanwhile, Savik Khan, the CEO, now oversees AI infrastructure, the fleets of servers, chips, data centers, and contracts needed to train and run these foundational models. Eddie Q, the service boss, gets search and knowledge, aligning AI with Apple Music, TV+, iCloud, and App Store, and potentially all of Apple's new AI services. So this split tells us Apple is doing three things making AI research and safety a first-class citizen under Amar Supramanya, embedding AI in front to core operations under Khan, crucial as Apple science chip and data center deals. Three, ensuring services monetization is tightly tied into AI through Q. So it's a triangular command structure. You got Amar with the brains, Sabi with the muscle, Q with the money, all under Federighi's software umbrella. Now layer this with the other Apple moves that, we that we've been tracking on front page. Because we have hardware and CEO succession and you know that is what we spoke about in our earlier episode where we tracked Tim Cook's exit as the Apple CEO and then of course as we've been mentioning Amar Subramanya's exit with Amar Subramanya's entry I mean as the new VP of AI and once again let's let me tell you how this fits into Apple's bigger playbook. So Again, uh, you know, let me relay this to you because I'm sure there's a lot of information. So Tim Cook, we all discussed that he's going to have a potential exit. John Turner's the quiet force behind Apple Silicon and modern iPhones is now leading, is the leading candidate. Apple is preparing an iPhone 20 super cycle with foldables, new curved glass designs and a staggered year round release schedule. And in that world, Apple needs Turner's driving hardware and silicon, Federica and Amar driving software plus AI. Q monetizing services on top, and Amar Subramanya is essentially being hired as the AI co-pilot for the post Cook and John Turner's era. Of course, you have Silicon and Intel building on the new AI hardware base. Because let me tell you, we're going to add one more puzzle piece because Apple is going back to Intel. Yes, you heard that right. From 2027, Intel is expected to manufacture Apple's entry-level M-series chips on its 18A or the 18AP process nodes, while TSMC handles the higher-end parts. So what does this happen? This lets Apple diversify beyond Taiwan, signal support for made-in-USA industrial policy, and secure more capacity for AI-heavy Macs and iPads. And for Intel, it's a chance to prove that its foundry come back and attract other big AI customers. So for Amar, who has seen Google's and Microsoft Infra's demands up close, this is quite powerful. He now gets to influence which models Apple builds, which chips they need, and in a world where AI performance, power efficiency, and on-device privacy are the main differentiators, 
and the Johnny Ive plus OpenAI threat also exists at the same time because Johnny Ive has sold his startup to OpenAI. Like we mentioned before, he and Sam Altman are working on an AI native hardware that could show up within two years. If OpenAI ships a beloved, beautifully designed AI device, Apple faces something it hasn't seen since the early Android days. It's a rival hardware ecosystem with world-class design and world-class frontier models. Amar's job is to make sure Apple intelligence feels so native, so private and polished on the iPhone, Mac and Vision Pro that users don't feel the need to defect. Let's zoom in on the India angle because this is not just feel-good nostalgia. A Bangalore University engineer now is going to direct Apple's foundation models and AI research while Apple is simultaneously expanding manufacturing in India, deepening its supplier footprint and hiring more local engineering talent. So symbolically, this appointment tells young Indian engineers that you don't just work for Silicon Valley anymore, you can literally end up steering where the AI strategy of the world's most valuable company lies. And practically, you should expect more India-aware models over time, better understanding and hopefully of Indian languages, accents and cultural context. And of course, closer collaboration between Bengaluru's AI talent pool and Cupertino's ML teams as Apple hunts for specialized researchers and infrastructure engineers. So what does success or failure look for Amr's Apple AI division? Best case scenario by 2026, series delayed reboot finally lands. It's going to be context aware reliably private and deeply integrated into apps across iPhone, Mac, Watch and CarPlay. And of course, Apple intelligence hopefully evolves from a buzzword into a real daily assistant, which is going to summarize your life, automate all of your workflows, all while running a lot of the intelligence on device locally. And Apple uses the Intel plus TSMC combination to ship AI optimized M-series chips, hopefully giving it a significant edge in battery life and latency. So in that world, Amar is remembered as the person who turned Apple from an AI laggard into the champion of private on-device AI. Middle of the road scenario is that Apple improves Siri and Apple intelligence, but remains a fast follower because Gemini, Copilot and OpenAI agents continue to stay a step ahead in raw capability. While Apple competes on design ecosystem and privacy, but not leading edge models. Worst case scenario, of course, we hope not, internal politics between AI, hardware services and infrastructure teams which leads to slow decision making. The Siri reboot stumbles again, Johnny AI plus OpenAI launch a beloved AI device and Apple's AI narrative once again becomes great hardware, OK AI, locked in ecosystem and in that world, this hire would be seen as a smart move but one that came too late. Here's the question that we're asking tonight. Is Amar Subramanya's Apple a Satya style inflection point for Apple's AI or just a high profile hire that's going to paper over deeper structural problems? Because on one side, Apple has missed the first wave of the Gen AI hype cycle and Apple intelligence is yet to produce a wow moment just like ChatGPT's launch. And the company is juggling potential CEO succession, AI catch up and once in a generation iPhone reboot all at the same time. On the other side, it now has a Bengaluru trained researcher who has built with Google, shipped with Microsoft and now has the mandate to redesign Apple's entire AI stack from foundational models to safety. So folks, tell us in the comments below, are you bullish on Apple's AI comeback under Amar Subramanya? This is Front Page by AIM Network. Like, share and subscribe. But always remember to think AI, think AIM.